Jenny Stewart smiled sadly as she watched her twin babies, Nathania and Brandon Jr., gurgle happily in their playpen. It had been two months since her husband, Brandon, was killed on a classified mission, leaving Jenny a young widow at age 22. Though the grief threatened to swallow her at times, Jenny tried to play strong for her children. She thought back to the night the special team had come to deliver the devastating news. Jenny had just spoken to Brandon hours earlier before he departed on the mission with his engineering colleague, Jim. Brandon had been so excited to put his MIT education and Army Ranger skills to use defending the country, but now he was gone, leaving a gaping hole in Jenny's heart. Thankfully, Brandon's teammates rallied around Jenny and the twins in the aftermath. The elite group operating out of a secret base under the vice president residence took the young family under their wing. Bob, the team psychologist, provided grief counseling, while Valerie and Janet helped care for the babies. John, the team leader, who had also tragically lost his own family, made a special effort to support Jenny, taking her to lunch weekly. Though they could never replace Brandon, the team became the support system Jenny desperately needed. Meanwhile, the classified counterterrorism operation that had claimed Brandon's life raced forward, relying upon intelligence collected through listening devices Jenny's husband had helped plant at a Mexican drug lord's compound. The CIA uncovered an Al-Qaeda plot to detonate a dirty bomb in Denver. Somali terrorists had smuggled the radioactive material through the Mexican border, hidden in backpacks to be carried by drug mules along remote mountain trails. To intercept the deadly cargo without tipping off the smugglers, Jim outfitted Army Ranger teams with the highly classified and visibility technology the special team had developed, donning cloaking goggles and ferrying micro-motion sensors to see the area. The invisible soldiers laid a trap, but the nighttime operation turned deadly when a guard dog detected the presence and firefight erupted. Brandon sacrificed his life, shielding a wounded ranger as they dragged each other to a waiting stealth helicopter. Grief-stricken but determined to prevent the attack, Jim worked feverishly to blanket the mountain around Denver with additional sensors. As information trickled in from the surveillance net, CIA listening devices. Homeland Security went on high alert, deploying radiation detectors and pulling in law enforcement to search vehicles and hikers. They scored a lucky break when officers tipped off by a detector pulled over a suspicious truck. A sniper in a police chopper shot out the tires, sending the vehicle careening off the road, killing the two occupants. Investigators recovered a dirty, crusted backpack that set off Geiger counters, but an intercepted message suggested the final deadly pack was still at large, its carriers trekking through the backcountry to unleash Allah's glory on the infidel city. In a desperation bid to find the remaining bomb, cloaked ranger teams deployed to the identified area, fast roping through silent helicopters to stalk their radioactive prey. Using the mobile sensors as their eyes, they closed in on two critically ill smugglers stumbling along a ridgeline. The man with the lethal backpack was fading fast from radiation sickness. As the commandos quietly flanked the pair, their Geiger counters screaming from the hot zone. Orders crackled through their earpieces. Terminate the targets. The silenced shots rang out, cutting down the poison orders. As unseen rangers maintained a perimeter, a lone figure repelled down from a hovering helicopter, clad head to toe in protective suit. He quickly stuffed the bodies and toxic pack into a shielded containment vessel before being winched skyward. On the ground, detectors fell silent, confirming the threat removed. The invisible soldiers melted back into the night as a Black Hawk ferried the deadly parcel away. Denver had been spared a radiological catastrophe at the 11th hour. That evening, as Jenny rocked baby Brandon to sleep, John paid a visit. 
He knew the mix of emotions that she must be experiencing. Relief that the plot her husband had given his life to uncover had been foiled, but also fresh grief over his loss. John's heart went out to the young mother, so much like himself just a few years ago. For the first time, he saw the flicker of something more than friendship in her expression, a hint of possibility. As the teammates regrouped in the aftermath, the toll of their narrow victory weighed heavily. They had saved countless lives, but the price had been one of their own. Jim in particular struggled with the loss of a brilliant young colleague he had recruited and mentored. As the engineers turned their efforts to expanding the capability of the stealth technology, determined to give operators every possible edge, each silently vowed to honor Brandon's memory and sacrifice. They were a family forged in shared service and tragedy, bound by secrets and an unbreakable commitment to each other and country. For Jenny, the path forward without the love of her life seemed impossibly daunting. But as she gazed at the innocent faces of Brandon's legacy, Jenny knew she would find a way with the help of her adopted family, drawing strength from their solidarity. She was not alone. Brandon's spirit lived on through the precious lives he had saved and the brotherhood he had died to defend. In time, Jenny hoped, the wound in her soul would scar over and a new chapter would begin but she would never allow herself or her children to forget the hero that was their father. Please go to our Patreon site and buy me a drink. Or, and also leave me a note so we know how much you may enjoy these views. Thank you. Please like and subscribe the Watcher in the Fall channel.